today's best mix, Mix 106. Roll down the windows, crank it up, and sing. The new Mix Morning Show with Mike and Nicole. Mix, mix. 106. Once again, uh, Charlie Linville is in the uh, studio with us. Former Marine, are you still considered? I once, guess once you're a Marine, you're always, always a Marine. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Hoorah! Yeah, hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your service. I, I, for one, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we are talking with Charlie. Is it surreal to sit there and think two weeks ago, you're literally on the top of the world, and now you're, you're back here in Boise, Idaho, having to talk to us three idiots? It, it's, <laughs> definitely sur- <laughs> it's, it's definitely surreal. The moment for me that was uh, really mind-baffling is the van comes up, right? You get down from all the climbing, get down to base camp, the van shows up, picks you up, and then you're like looking back at this mountain that's you know, 14, 15 miles away and realize that you just stood there and then in my mind, I'm like, oh, well, that's it. I'm never coming back to this place again. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Been there, done that. It's been a great, great two months, ya. but I'm not doing it again. <laughs> How many days or weeks did it take you? Because you have to stop for a while and acclimate at certain levels, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So you get to 17,000 feet, and then you have to go to 19,000 feet, and then all the way back down. It's just this up and down game to mm-hmm. get your body to get used your body to the used altitude. To it, right. and so yeah, that's spend- what people don't realize is that and it's not straight I'm up. Like, I'm like you. I sit there and watch all these movies, and it's like, yeah, you don't just go, hey, I'm going to climb. We're here. It'll take me two days to climb to the top, and we're done. No. Right. You run into people that are like, Everest, that's like, a, that's like, you'll be back in a week. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, yeah. Back in a week. <laughs> All right. So you got yourself acclimated and the dead, the uh, death zone is 26,000. 20, yep. Basically, when you get to that area, you are now dying. So you're not living anymore. You are slowly beginning to die. You can't live in that zone. So you spend a short amount of time there. And this is where the climb really begins, correct? Absolutely. I mean, that's that's where the, the taxing part on your body is. I mean, you, you, people are like, what'd you eat? And like, well, you don't digest food at that altitude. Oh, really? See, now oh, I didn't know I that. I didn't realize that. But you, and, and your body is burning, what, ten oh, to 20,000 calories a day? Absolutely. I mean, I lost 30 pounds. Wow. So it used to be a fat dude, and now you're just a <laughs> skinny <laughs> fat. Really? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's crazy. Um, so, you know, when you get up at that altitude, it's everything is incredibly laboring. And you're on supplemental oxygen the whole time. You take it off for, you know, four minutes, five minutes, and you can just, you're spent. It's like, uh, 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 I can barely breathe. Uh, and, and, it's, and, and it's still hard even though you're on oxygen too, correct? Yeah, absolutely. You can only be on a certain amount of oxygen. I mean, you, there's only so many bottles that went up, and so you've got to ration what you have to get oh, to yeah. the summit and all the way back down. Wow. What's it like uh, trying to sleep? Can you sleep at all? I mean, it's got to be almost impossible. You know, it's different for everybody, but I've always really been a really good sleeper, so I can tell you, I, I can tell you, at 27,000 feet, I sleep well. <laughs> How cold is it? Uh, it depends on the day. On our summer day, it was minus five plus about 40 or 50 mile hour winds, so, you so know, you're talking, minus 30. Yeah, I was going to say plus. 30 or 40. Yeah, it was nice. And, so you notice it. It was nice and tropical. Yeah, I, and I know you're dressed, you're dressed for it with, you know, special high-tech gear and everything like that, but you still notice it, correct? Oh, absolutely you notice it, and I've got my your big puffy down suit on, which yeah. is, I'm going to use as a sleeping bag now camping here in Boise, because <laughs> I can like get up in the middle of the night and stay in my sleeping bag. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, you're definitely dressed for it, and you take extra layers and try to, you know, mitigate as much as you can but it's it's freezing I but mean, at that temperature you're i mean any skin that's out for more than a couple minutes freezes yep i mean i got frostbite on my face uh for the summit day so from that point when you are you get the obviously you have to get the official okay it's time your turn correct yeah so uh what we did was we followed the the chinese rope fixing team so we were the only uh actual climbing team on the mountain that day and so oh, literally awesome. we had everest to ourselves so if, if you like to be somewhere and, and see fantastic views by mm-hmm. yourself that's a, that's a good bet <laughs> Dang. at any point was there uh a part in your climb where you said what the hell did i just do yeah. <laughs> i am like literally inches from dying or i f- this is too scary I never got in a situation where my life was really in jeopardy, but you come up to Tahedral, which is like the last part of climbing Everest, and it's literally a mile drop into Tibet, and you're on this like maybe eight inch rock path. So if you go off it, you're going yeah. You're if you go off it, that's like lights lights out, done, game over, Ugh. and uh, you're exhausted by this point, right? So you've been climbing for hours, uh-huh. freezing, and uh, it's like I got to get through this. Oh great, right. you know, and I really just Your balance. I'm sure too with being right and being on a prosthetic with crampons. Do you have? Yeah. Do you have? A, did you have a special prosthetic just for climbing? Because I'm guessing you have to worry about freezing with your regular one. You have to have some sort of way to hold on in the ice. 
Yeah, so it's, it was custom designed uh, prosthetic shop here in town. Uh, oh, did, that's cool. Did a great job, and then we insulated it with a uh, special foam to make sure I didn't get frostbite right. on my residual mm. limb as well. Um, but I can tell you, the crampons on a prosthetic limb with rock is like skating on marbles. Ugh. Like it was, it was a hairy situation, but I really just blocked out the entire mile drop off and just uh <laughs> just one foot i take it you're not afraid of heights the one foot well i you know anybody's afraid of that i mean you look at mile <laughs> yeah. down you're you're not, so, of that. That. see here's the deal if i stood on this table that would freak the hell out of me so there's no way i could get up on everest but so if i just dropped you off in that s- scenario and said okay either live or die yeah you, you're gonna figure it out no, right I, I would sit there suck my thumb <laughs> until i actually froze to death and i would just go to sleep <laughs> and eat your banana and chili <laughs> that's pretty much what happened uh i also read a at one part uh, after your, after the climb was done and you came down, you had to stop for a few extra days to rest because you couldn't even get your prosthetic leg back on because of you know everything you went through on the climb. Uh, that's true. So when you when you have a prosthetic leg, my leg that goes in there it shrinks down and you have to add these things. Um, I would call them just socks and adds volume back to your leg because mm-hmm. you've shrunk and so the legs casted beforehand right so if i lose weight or i lose any uh fluid or volume it doesn't fit and so what happens is uh now my leg just jams down into the carbon fiber and that's the situation i got myself in um i was in a place where i couldn't really take my leg off and add the volume to Mm -hmm. it and so i just had to deal with the pain of you know the end of my shin jamming into carbon fiber for about four hours oh man and so by the time i got back to advanced base camp i my bone was so bruised that i just looked at my leg like nope you and me, you you and me aren't days. friends right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to hang out. Was there anybody there filming for a documentary possibly to watch this climb? Or are we going to be able to see you on Abs- film sometime? Absolutely. So the Heroes Project, uh, the veteran organization I climbed with, films everything. And so awesome. the documentary, it's not just myself. It's the six other veterans that climbed the six other summits of the world. And it should be released uh, early next year. Awesome. That is very cool. Uh, I want to thank you for coming in here, um, for uh, spending an hour with us this morning. Thank you for your service uh, to our country. Uh, thank you for sharing your story and amazing attitude uh, yeah, that optimism. you have. I, I wish we could bottle it and give a spoonful to every person uh, in uh, America yep. or in the world, basically, mm-hmm. um, because uh, your, your attitude and everything is so fantastic. And continued success to you and your family.